In today's video, I am going to be breaking down Chris Duarte and how he shoots the basketball. He is a very good shooter, especially as a rookie in the NBA, so let's get down and let's check him out. So first we're going to be we're going to be looking at his step back and his step back is absolutely amazing. So when he takes a step back, what do we really see? Well, first off, when he lands on this step back, we can see that he lands left right, which is very important that will allow his right side to get in line. This is important because by stepping back towards your left side and then stepping in with your right foot, that is going to allow you to quickly get that shoulder and elbow in line with the rim and it's also a much faster release for most players who are right-handed when he goes up for a shot here we can see that he doesn't have a 90 degree angle on his elbow actually it's surprising how many players don't have that and yet so many coaches will try to teach that he however does have roughly a 90 degree on his shoulder and about I would say a 45 degree angle on his elbow this means to me that he is trying to get a little bit more power from his tricep as well as his shoulder to be able to get that release I just also really want to point out right here that his elbow is above his forehead which will give him a higher set or high higher release which will give him more arc on the ball he also has a slight sway to his lower body it's not drastic but the more sway that you could have the less consistent your shot could be unless your shoulders also go back so if you've got a sway forward that will give you more power however you want to counter that by bringing your shoulders back because then if you have a sway and that brings your shoulders forward that's going to mess with the distance of your shot so you want to have a sway with your legs you also want to pull your shoulders back too and that's what we do see here when he goes up for a shot as well what we can see is that his knees do come together his feet are pointing the exact same direction as his hips as well as his shoulders this is all very important the only thing that's out of line is that left knee versus the right knee that is pointing in the same direction as everything else generally speaking you want to have everything in line however if your left knee if you're a right-handed player is out of line that's not going to really affect your shot that much if any at all when he goes up for his set point we can see that of course his hand is right underneath the ball and generally right down the middle which is very important and then we have his off hand that is on the side of the ball fingers as we can see very widely spread out that's going to give you more stability on your shot and we can see that he does have a very slight thumb flick however by the time it actually releases we can see that he pulls his thumb off of that ball so it actually doesn't give him a true thumb flick where it's flicking at the same time as release you don't want that thumb flicks are okay as long as it's not affecting the release of the ball when he does release we can see that he has from other angles a somewhat hard release kind of like Michael Jordan and that's why he gets just so much rotation on that ball see what you want to have is a lot of arc so that it drops in much easier the rim looks bigger if you've got lots of arc but you also want to have lots of backwards rotation on that ball so that when it does hit that rim it's going to slow down to hopefully bounce into, obviously, the rim. We can see from this angle as well that when he's going up for a shot, he has a very low gather. His shoulders are over top of his knees and toes. However, he has 90 on his hips and 90 on his knees. Some players don't get this low. Chris Duarte does. And he does have here a substantial dip in his shot. But not all shots are like that with him, however. It seems like more of the set shots that he has will have that dip. And we can see here that he may have a little bit of spacing between his palm and the ball but generally speaking the higher percentage shooters tend to have a smaller gap and a very minimal gap at that we can also see that he doesn't turn his body in the air which means that he has that left shoulder back so that he can get his right side in line all the way from gather up to set point which is just above his right eye and then up to release he doesn't move his left shoulder back it's already back he's already slightly tilted away from the rim which will allow him again to get 
that shoulder and elbow in line. This is extremely important. And by having half of that ball over top of his shoulder, which he does, that's going to create the, what I call the shooting triangle, which is the side of the ball down to the shoulder, up to the elbow, and back to the side of the ball. You want that to be in line with the basket. This being, of course, your left-right motion, and then, of course, shoulder and elbow in line as to where it's going to aim. It's a multi-faceted approach for your aim and you want to really have a lot of energy transfer from your legs up into your shot as well and we do see that here he's getting a lot of power from his legs and then when he's still going up into the air he's going into his release that's going to be basically be a one motion shot however he does tend to freeze at his set point for multiple frames I would say for at least six frames at the very least but technically speaking because he freezes at his set point he's a two motion shooter but he has the one motion shooter style where you're actually going into releasing the ball while you're still going up a true two motion shooter will freeze that ball at the forehead more like a Ray Allen who will then go to release that ball at the pinnacle or the top point of his jump overall Chris Duarte is a fantastic shooter in my opinion I hope that this video has helped you become a better shooter yourself. If it has, hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time.